All right, Shalom, Shalom. Back again with another uh, video breakdown. It's your boy, Tribe of Judah, Awakens 144. And uh, first off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. I want to say Shalom to the elect scattered across the four corners of the earth and to the apostles and elders who taught me this truth, starting with the men of the Lord from Great Millstone, GMS, to you I say Shalom. And uh, what you see on the screen here is a video by one of the beloved brothers, Elder Yashawamba, from the uh, GMS camp uh, over there in Dallas. And uh, this is a video entitled by him, The Lawlessness of Christianity. And uh, <clears throat> I sat through this entire video um, and he posted it um, a couple of days ago. And um, I sat on it because it, it made me think of a lot of things pertaining to Christianity, the overall doctrine that they push uh, amongst the masses of the people. And uh, just like many other so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, you know, um, I was brought up in a Baptist church, you know, but I had my my doubts on a lot of things growing up in a church house. I used to question my uncle when I was a you know kid growing up because I was actually intrigued of the word, you know, like I I remember growing up as a kid, I had fear of the most high, but I didn't know, you know, the whole truth on like how, you know, that spirit has been placed back upon the earth, starting with Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. But nevertheless, uh, I don't want this to be too, too long, but granted, if the spirit, you know, wants me to go over time, we're going to go over time for the sake um, to edify the elect. OK, um, little disclaimer, um, you know, if you're a believer, OK, and you want to know the truth and you want to learn something and you want your spirits lifted and you want to be edified and stick around because you're going to get a lot out of this video, this little lesson that I put together. Um, if you just hear the scoff, laugh, you're not a believer, plain and simple, just get the hell off my channel. You know, I'm not here to um, try to persuade. I'm not here to try to convert. I'm not here to do any of that. I'm here to do the work. I'm here to do what I can to help rebuild the tabernacle of David through the spirit. And Lord willing, the elect hears this video. OK, I'm not here for numbers. I'm not here for likes. I'm not here for any of that crap. I'm here to edify the people if they want to learn. So without further ado, I'm going to make the screen full size so you guys can see. And um, we're going to get into the video and um, throughout the video, I'm going to let it play until I feel that uh, it's enough. And then we're just going to jump into some scriptures so we can break down. With this pastor saying now before we play the video just to give you guys a little bit of a background scenario to what's going on this was a video captured by a pastor uh who's speaking amongst his congregation about he doesn't keep any of the you know the ten commandments now i'm going to explain more in depth but i want to just let the video play so you guys can see what's actually being said here so here we go this is childish. No, the two. Not all bagels. Why? Well, that's fair. Matter of fact, there's 613 commandments within the law that none of us could obey. Adultery, but you lied. 
Now, according to the law, you're guilty of all. Jesus. According to the first covenant. That's right. The covenant you would be guilty of all, but through the Messiah. Okay? You have grace. You can now walk in the spirit. Now, let's say you do sin and go off. All right? As Job said, when the Lord judges you, okay, he wants to judge you by your intent. Okay? In your innocence. All right? So, yeah, this is why Yahweh Shai died on the cross, so that we can be justified. <laughs> and we were chosen from the foundation of the earth to receive of that blessing. But that does not give us the go-ahead to just say, all right, well, you know, I'm a, you know, I do go off, so I'm going to just continue. I'm going to go off some more. I'm a and I want to pause right there because he has a point in what Elder Yashawamba is saying. That, that's the whole purpose of Yahweh Shai um, coming on the earth because you have to understand if you if you read the scriptures and you read it in its entirety and you have the proper understanding to the point where you can comprehend what's being said in the scriptures and follow prophecy you will see that Yahweh Shah who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ simply came on the scene okay to be a living sacrifice for the repentance and the remission of Israel's sins. No other nation. Now, where Christianity falls into that category is it's saying that, yes, the Messiah came to save, but to engraft everybody. Everybody saved. So now does that mean that you can go off, as Elder Yashawamba said in the video, and just commit all type of wickedness and abominations, that's not what, no. Because why did John the Baptist come on the scene and tell, and, and, and say, Salakia, so like and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then later, when the Messiah came and started his ministry with his 12 disciples, he told the 12 disciples to go and preach the word that the kingdom is at hand. And for uh, all of Israel and the Gentiles who are Israelite foreigners, Okay, and Lord willing, I'll do a lesson on that to repent. Repent from what? That's the key question that we got to ask ourselves. What are you repenting from? Because if Yahweh Shah is telling you to repent, there's a reason. You're repenting from whatever you're going off, whatever you're committing in terms of a transgression. All right, but we're going to get into it. Let's. Let's uh let's get some more of this. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Shit, fuck the castle, I'm gonna eat a shark. <laughs> fuck, a, fuck a shark, I'm gonna eat a human foot. Yeah. Shit, I, I lied, I went off. I looked at another man's wife, man, I damn. So shit, I might as well just go ahead and sleep with her. Yep. You just don't there's never ending this lawlessness upon lawlessness and sin upon sin. Which is going to lead to you all destruction, man. The law is not made for a righteous person, yes. but yet you want to obey the Ten Commandments. Yes. And what does the scripture say that, uh, roughly paraphrasing, that um, for anyone who, who says that they have not sinned is a fool? Because we all fall short of uh, glory. So who. Um, who walked the only person who walked perfect in the whole entire planet was Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He was the only person that came, the, you know, that came in the flesh and walked perfectly. But with, with us being in the flesh, you're going to go off. But let's continue. You can't work for righteousness. You got to receive it. So why are we trying to obey the Ten Commandments? Did you hear that? He said you cannot work for righteousness. You have to receive it. Well, that's a little bit contradicting because you can't just sit on your ass and expect. You see, this is the this is the problem with Christianity. They they want you to think that you go and you believe on the blood and he died on the cross. And then that's it. You won't have to do anything. Just your belief itself is what's going to get you saved. But that's not what the scriptures is talking about. And this is a whole, this is the problem with the masses of the people around the world. 
this doctrine, this doctrination of Christianity has destroyed millions of people because you have millions of people that are thinking that just because Yahweh Shah came down, died on the cross, that is 110 percent OK for you to go off and do your own thing, eat abominable foods, go and sleep with another man's wife. OK, go and steal something. Committing usury upon your neighbor. OK, uh, sleeping uh, with your wife on her period, things like that, all of those stuff that are in the law. So. We're going to come back to that. I don't like I said, I didn't want this video to be long. We're already 10 minutes over. So let's just start. First off, let's get uh, let's get first John three and four. And it reads whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so now we have a definition of what the word sin means in the bible it's the transgression of the law so as i said earlier when john the baptist came on the scene and said to repent for the remission of sins what are you repenting from where well, you're repenting from the transgression of the law because going back two thousand plus years ago even as of today the same people, the same things that people are doing today, they were doing 2000 years ago. It's no different. All right. So in order for us to wrap our heads around this so that we all can gain a better understanding of what the Messiah, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, was actually telling the children of Israel. And prior to that, before Yahweh Shah came on the scene, we're going to go back through the Old Testament and we're going to finish up into the New Testament so that we can get uh, we can gain an overall complete understanding of what's actually being said through the scriptures. And Lord willing, you guys are edified. So we're going to start. Get rid of that. So we're going to start in Exodus where the Ten Commandments were first given on high down to Moses. Now, again, let me just reiterate. They call it. Moses laws or the mosaic laws. Okay, it's not Moses laws. It's the laws of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. He came down to give His laws, such as commandments to Moses to give to the people. All right, so let's read Exodus 20 and 1 In the Most High Spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy power Yahweh thy power Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage verse 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me verse 4 thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth verse 5 thou shalt not bow down themselves to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right. Verse six and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do slakia. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all them, Salakia, all that are in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Salakia, hold on. Okay, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Verse 17. Thou shalt, shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. 
Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his neighbor's, okay? To covet means that you are, um, what's, a, what's another word um, that I can use? Basically, let's just go into the definition. It's easier that way so you guys can see it on the screen. And that word for covet. Strong's age, 2530. Hamad. Hamad. Right. To desire, covet, take pleasure in, delight in. To desire something. So, a lot of y'all, including myself, were guilty of seeing something that we desire, we have to have. Okay? You idolize, you lust after, you just got to have it. All right? Now, here's the definition. It says, beauty, greatly beloved, covet, uh, delicable thing. Uh, what we have here, great, delight, desire, goodly, lust. You get the point, right? Now, that was the first Ten Commandments. Now, he did mention earlier in the video that you have this thing uh, of there being over 613 laws. And that's true. The Ten Commandments is just a short version of those 613 laws because at the end of the day, the Ten Commandments, uh, if you can do the Ten Commandments, you're basically doing all of the 613 laws, but mainly the last of it being love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now, when you love your neighbor as yourself, if you're walking in the spirit, okay, you're going to fulfill the law. That is the royal law, which you can get that in the book of James, which we want to grab later on in this video. So let's continue on. Let's get rid of that. This is Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. All right, and we start at the seventh verse. So right now, this is when Israel was getting into the land of Canaan, uh, called Canaan at that time, which is now today called uh, Israel. And um, again, you'll see that the Ten Commandments is reiterated. Verse seven: Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that it is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down themselves unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse 11, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay? For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse 12, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Okay, verse 13, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. And then it just goes on to explain, okay, as you drop down even further, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, bear false witness, etc. Right? Now, we understand that. So, overall, in the Old Testament, the argument in the church house is that that was the Old Testament, okay? When, you know, when the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, came on the scene, he done away with that. And that's where this pastor's going, even though he didn't say that. But clearly, based off him saying that, he does one, he doesn't keep them. Two, he uses a scripture that says that the law was not made for the righteous, but for the sinner. Right. And I've already told you guys that there's a scripture that says that uh, he that says that he doesn't sin. OK. Matter of fact, let's get it. All right. So like you, this is first John one and eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness verse 10 if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us so for you to sit there as a pastor and say oh well you know at the end of the day i don't sin or rather i don't keep none of these laws because the scripture says the laws are not given to the righteous but to the sinner so you're classifying yourself as righteous because you saying that you don't have to keep them. You're making a mockery out of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, man. Because we just read here in 1 John 1 and 8, if we say that we have no sin, 
which is clearly can be interpreted if you're saying that if you're going by the scripture that says uh, that the law, uh, the law is not given to the righteousness, but it's given to the sinner. You see how you can easily take that out of context. That's not what the scripture is talking about, because we all fall short of the glory. All right. So that's that. Now we're going to get into what Yahweh says, man, so we can break it down even further. This is Matthew 5 and 17. Let's put this in a red letter so you guys can see that it is coming from the Messiah himself. All right. It says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Okay. And it goes on to say, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But this fellow here, you know, he's teaching people not to follow them, saying, oh, I'm going to set you free tonight because you're not supposed to be following the commandments. Now, yes, we're, we're not saved by the law, but does that mean that the law is no longer established. No. And we'll get that. All right. But moving forward, let's go. What does it mean to fulfill? Because this is another, this little saying right here, but to fulfill, you Christians think that that means that when he came and died on the cross, that everything was done and the law was done away with. That's not what it's talking about. Let's look up the actual uh, word. Uh, fulfill strong g 4137 play rao play rao right it says here to make full to fill up to fill to the full all right um c to carry into effect bring to realization realize of matters of duty to perform execute okay of sayings promises prophecies to bring to pass ratify accomplish to fulfill i.e to cause god's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be in god's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment so that is the overall definition let me read that again. <laughs> to carry into effect, bring to realization, which he did by teaching the ministry, realize to fulfill, i.e., example, to cause God's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be. So that's that's if you still don't understand that after I uh, read it in, in simple terms to fulfill, to make it known. That the Most High's will, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, law needs to be obeyed as it should be. Because it was said back, back then and it still stands today. That's what it's saying. All right. So let's exit that out. Let's keep it moving. The rich and the young ruler. This is Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him. Let me put this in a red letter so you guys can see. All right, Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Okay, you Christians should know this. Verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God or the Most High. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. This is the New Testament. Now, watch this. Verse, uh, verse 18. He said unto him, which Yahweh Shah said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Simple. Verse 20, the young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Yahweh shall said unto him, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now, why would he say that last part? Because does not the scripture says that he that turns away from his, his wife, his son, you know, children, mother, uh, house, vineyard, whatever he has, he should uh, gain a hundredfold in the kingdom. Let's see if I can get that scripture. All right, this is uh, Matthew 19 and 28. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Why? Because you're going to have a lot of people that's going to come into this faith, and they're not going to want to give up everything because they're going to be too far gone into the world. That's why the Heavenly Father, through Yahweh Shah, said, leave off from the world. Because the lust and everything in this world passes away. That's why you're not supposed to hold on to anything in this world. You ain't supposed to worry about um, your career. You ain't supposed to worry about saving to get a house and everything because all of that is not going to exist. All of that is going to be done away with. All right. But let's keep it moving, man. We're already 25 minutes over. This is uh, this is uh, St. John and we'll start verse. Uh, this is St. John 15. We'll start at verse 10. And this is Yahweh Shai again. Put it in red letter for y'all, right? This is Yahweh Shai, verse uh, 10, chapter 15, verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. John 15 and 12, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatever so I command you. Right? Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. You see that? All right. And then it goes down to verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. Now, what's quite interesting about this particular chapter, when it turns, when it comes to the world, because Christianity seems, it seems to go right over their head. With this, and this is another question I have, not only to that pastor in that video, but to all you so-called Christians out there that you claim that God loves everybody. But look what he, look what Yahweh Shah says in, in, in the next verse, verse 18. If the world hates you, what's the world? Earth, the world that we live in, right? If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you now why would he say that why would he say the world hated me before it hated you he's going to tell us verse 19 if ye were of the world the world would love his own okay now what's funny is going back to the video every time this guy talked or should i say when he uh, specifically said i'm gonna set y'all free notice how the whole room clapped because he's going against what Yahweh Shai through Yahweh had ordained on high of following the commandments. That's what Yahweh Shai was talking about of being in the world because you're uh, you're following after not only after your own lust, but you're seeking what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you're seeking validation from those around you, trying to make yourself feel good from those around you. To make it easier so that you can try to pull people in, right? So, 
Verse 19 again, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own, right? And that's what we see here happening with this guy. Everybody is saying, yeah, you should hear the guy in the back. Thank you, Jesus, right? But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. And that's what's going on today, including myself and including the men of the Lord and the prophets that are out there on the highways and byways teaching this truth. We getting persecuted. We getting people laughing at us. We getting people hating on us because they are not for the truth. And it's mostly you damn Christians because you Christians stumble upon our videos. And when we're out there on the streets teaching and preaching the truth, OK, we get laughed at. We get uh, scoffed at. OK, you see a lot of things going on. And then you and then you get people that uh, come up on YouTube. and They put videos up to try to overshadow and say that, you know, uh, it's a cult that we're in or we're indoctrinating people and everything else like that. But my question would be, why would the world hate you based off what Yahweh Shah's words are saying here? Because if you following the scriptures to the T and you're doing it to the best of your ability, you're going to suffer. The scripture says, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. And that's in the Apocrypha, I believe, second address. Or uh, second um, Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter, one of those two. One of you brothers can comment on that. But he goes on to say, verse 20, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they uh, have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But yet. Christians will sit there and watch a whole movie based off the Ten Commandments and see that this man was preaching, right? And most of those, you know, most of Esau's movies is just over-exaggerated anyway because they um, depict so-called Jesus Christ as this loving God. But the scripture says he was a very austere man, meaning he was firm. He wasn't uh, no one to be joking around with. He was there about uh, business. That's why the scripture said, I'm, I'm here to, uh, I'm about my father's business. When his uh, parents, Mary and Joseph, when they asked, you know, him to come wherever he was doing, I forget the scripture. He turned around and said to him, I'm about my father's business. He was talking about the heavenly father, Yahweh. All right. So that's the problem that we're coming up in today. So now let's turn our attention and go to Galatians the fourth chapter and we'll start at uh, verse four but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons now this is a two-fold scripture here because this scripture confuses christianity thinking that the so-called Gentiles is any nation in the entire planet who believes that they can be grafted in. This is not what it's talking about because not even a secret, but here in verse five to redeem them. Who is that them that were under the law where we know there was only one nation of people that was under the law? And that was the Israelites, because when you get we'll, we'll get it. I don't want to give it away, but I want to try to keep this. Um, structure. I want because I really want you guys to see this nonsense that people like this idiot here spews out in these church houses. Which, mind you, therefore the most the scriptures tells you that the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. So any of you guys that's going to these uh, church houses on a Sunday, all right, you're done. You're going off because the Heavenly Father is not. He isn't. He's nowhere in there. His spirit doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. And the scriptures tells you that I believe that's in uh, the book of Acts, right? But let's read it again, Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Now, what does it mean made under the law? Because I said early in the video that when Yahweh Shai came down, he kept the whole law perfect all the way to his birth. And I believe in the book of Hebrews, it tells you roughly paraphrasing that uh, he, he was perfect. The most the heavenly father said he was perfect. He didn't break one law. Right. 
So, but verse five, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. Now, let's get a precept to this. Let's get out of there. Let's go to Romans, the ninth chapter. And we're going to start at verse three. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ or a Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So he's talking about blood, the bloodline. It's not talking about anybody, according to kinsmen. It's talking about that bloodline, that genealogy, that lineage, right? Here's the point. Verse four, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law. So who did he come to redeem? The Israelites. And the service of God and the promises, because the promises was given to Abraham, right? But it was given to Abraham's seed, singular, not plural, but singular. We know that Abraham had many children. The firstborn was Ishmael, but Ishmael was not given the promises. It was Isaac. And then Isaac's son, Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Okay. The blessing went to who? Jacob. Jacob had his 12 sons who are the 12 patriarchs of the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Verse five, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all the most high blessed forever. Aman. Right now. I said earlier, who was given the law? Well, we know it was the Israelites, but let's get Psalms 147. We're going to start at verse 19. He showeth his word. What word? This book, the law, such as commandments unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. And we bring this scripture out all the time um, to show that Christianity is done because this just proves that how can anybody partake in a new covenant when the law, statute, and commandments, which is under that first covenant, was never given to any other nation but Israel. So how can you give uh, other nations outside of Israel partakers under the new covenant when they were never given the old covenant to begin with that makes absolutely no sense all right but let's keep it moving all right don't want this to be too long we're doing all right now this is isaiah's 63rd chapter right we're going to start at verse 17 it says O lord why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from the, uh, thy fear return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thy inheritance Verse 18, the people of thy holiness have possessed it, but a little while It's talking about the land. Our adversaries, meaning that their enemies have trodden down thy sanctuary. Verse 19, here's the point. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. He's talking about the other nations. They were not called by thy name. That's plain. This is Isaiah saying to the Most High, we are yours, we are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. You ain't never ruled over them. It was us. You chose us. They were not called by thy name. So how can these other nations partake in something that was never given to them? And this is what I keep reiterating over and over and over again in mostly all of my videos. But see, when you don't, when we don't read and we just take what somebody is preaching and teaching at face value, but we don't go further to look these things up, you shooting yourself and you, you shooting your own self in the foot. Right. Let's keep it moving. Romans, the 13th chapter, starting at verse eight. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. That's what Yahweh Shah said. Right. We read that in John 15 chapter. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now stop. This one scripture here causes so many uh, discrepancy within the Christiani uh, Christianity Salakia doctrine. This one scripture here just goes over everybody's head because they think that when it says to uh, for he that loveth another, 
have fulfilled the law. That's not talking about, brother, I'm not even going to argue with you. I'm going to love you. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to love you. All right? That's not what it's talking about, man. The love is talking about, drop down to the next verse. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, if you love your brother, are you going to sit up there and look at his wife and go behind his back while he's at work or doing something and have sex with her? That ain't love. You don't love your brother if you do that uh, silliness, man. That's wicked. Here's another one. Thou shalt not kill. We see it going on with our nation of people every day. Killing each other. That's not love. You get into the scripture, the, uh, Yahweh Shah said, uh, Matthew the sixth chapter, if you if you um, come to the altar to, off, to make an offering and you see, I'm just roughly paraphrasing, um, and you see your fellow neighbor and let's say you guys got into it or you have some sort of disagreement with each other before you give your offering up go and reconcile with that person and then once you reconcile with that individual then you come and give your offering for sin and did not the messiah yahweh Mashiach said that if someone hits you on the right cheek turn the other cheek and let him hit you also but y'all won't do that though <laughs> that's in the scripture right Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. This is a huge one in a black community, so-called black community, uh, that is. Bearing false witness, sitting up there snitching just because you envy somebody and you want to see them go down. So you make up a lie and, or you go along with someone else's foolishness that they're plotting against somebody else. All right. And then we all know how that ends up. That brother or that sister end up getting killed over some silliness because somebody didn't bear false witness against their neighbor. And we see this happen all the time in the community. All the time. Thou shalt not covet. You, we know to desire. And if there be, but here's, here's the thing right here. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now. Christianity skips right over this last little bit of part right here in this verse. And if there be any other commandment, what did the guy say in a video? What did the pastor say in a video? He said that there were 613 laws. We can't keep all of them. You're damn right. We cannot keep all of them, but you can keep the ones that are very easy to keep. So let's find out if there be any other commandment. It is briefly in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's look, let's look up any other commandment, right? Let's go to the book of Leviticus. Let's look up the laws about animal foods. This is any other commandment. This will be classified as any other commandment. Here's the one commandment that everybody should be able to keep. Leviticus 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Verse 8, here's the point. Of their flesh, meaning the swine, shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So, ham, bacon, ham hocks, pork rolls, all right, pig feet, all right, all any type of pork, you ain't supposed to be eating it. Is that a law that you can keep today? Yes, you can. That's not hard. I don't give a damn how much you love your bacon and egg sandwich in the morning. Swap it for some damn turkey bacon. You ain't supposed to be eating pork. Now, when it says, let's go back to Romans 13. When it says... And if there be any other commandment, which we know there's 613 laws, that's what it's talking about. It is briefly comprehended. Let's look up that word. Let's look up that word comprehended to get a little bit more context of what that verse is actually Strong's saying. G346, Anakephaliao. 
to sum up again, to repeat summarily, to condense into a summary. So to sum up, so it's saying if there be any other commandment, basically to sum it up, just love your neighbor. Now, you may say, well, how is uh, not eating pork a sum up of love your, uh, uh, your neighbor? You just stupid. Because the whole point of the matter is you're not going to sit there um, at a, at a uh, person who invites you over for dinner, right? Or, Salaki, let's say this. You used to love pork. You used to love bacon, shrimp, craw, uh, crawfish, and all of that, which are abominable foods that you shouldn't be eating. So you, so you invite some people to the house, and knowing that you eat them, but you stop, but you're going to sit up there and be like, man, I got I got company over, so I know I ain't supposed to be eating it, but I know they're going to want some of this, so let me just go ahead and whoop this out. And then you tell your neighbor, you know, oh, yo, man, we're going to have some crawfish, we're going to have some catfish, you know, got some crab legs in there and everything. And you don't know if he's coming into the truth or she's coming into the truth, all right? You're going to place a stumbling block on them because you're going to that. And that's what's happening in the church. The church is uh, telling you that you don't have to keep the laws, but you in there catfish, you know, spaghetti on Sunday and all of that stuff, eating abominable foods. That's not loving your neighbor. The most high just we just read in John that if you I said, if you follow me and keep my commands, I will liken you unto a friend. That's what he said. Because these commandments are not grievous. The, as I said earlier in the video, the Ten Commandments is a short version of the 613 laws. You keep the Ten Commandments to the best of your ability, you do well. Because when you sum it all up, you love your neighbor as thyself. You don't go out and just show love to your neighbor, but then you're wicked on yourself. No, you have to love yourself, forgive yourself, repent, because what you do becomes a reflection on the outside. And then people see that aura and then they're going to want to take part because they see the knowledge and wisdom given on high from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai based off you keeping the commandments. And this is why this damn, this earth is just, excuse my French, is fucked up because nobody is keeping the uh, the law, statute, commandments. That's just what it is, man. And I and I got to be careful what I say because you know they gonna they can easily take my video down. But let's keep it moving. So we got that right now. Let's go to James because he also brought out about um, law of liberty, right? So let's just see what James is actually talking about now. Uh, let's start at um, let's start at verse twelve. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now, why would James say in the New Testament, "Blessed is the man that endureth temptation"? But you have silly ass pastors out here telling you you don't have to keep the commandments. What's temptation? Let's look that up real quick. Strong's G, 3986, Pyrasmas. Pyrasmas. So that's the word in the Greek. Let's see what it says. It says here, an experiment, attempt, trial proving. The trial of man's fidelity, integrity, virtue, uh, constancy. What do we have here? An enticement to sin, temptation, whether arising from the desires or from the outward circumstances. You see that? Of the temptation, an internal temptation to sin, of the temptation by which the devil sought to divert so called Jesus, the Messiah, from his divine errand of the condition of things or a mental state by which we are enticed to sin or to a lapse from the faith and holiness adversity affliction trouble sent by the most high and serving to test or prove one's character 
faith, holiness. Did not, when you read the book of Job, what happened with Job? Job was tested. The Most High told Satan to go down and test Job's uh, faith. We forget about that easily. We forget about that. So, if James said, blesses he that endureth temptation, let's not get confused here. Endureth temptation means you're put under affliction, trouble, because did not Yahweh Shah tell his, uh, tell his disciples, the servant is not greater than his master. So whatever I go through, all the persecution that I go through, you're going to go through just as worse. So blessed is he that endureth. What does it mean to endure? Meaning that you last, you go through your trials and tribulations, but you don't give up. You keep the faith and you keep the laws, statutes and commandments. You endure until the end because that is part of your test. The most high ain't looking for you to just sit on your ass and say, oh, yeah, I believe. But you're going to go out here and do all types of God know what. Doesn't matter all types of wickedness, man. That doesn't make any sense. And you can see the the controversy and the confusion with the church house, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Orthodox, whether it's baptism, whether it's Catholicism, whether it's Jehovah Witnesses, whether it's the Catholic Church, that it's all the same bullshit. Let's see uh, what the root word is. To try whether a thing can be done. To attempt, endeavor, to try, make trial of, test for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks or how he will behave himself, right? To try or test one's faith, virtue, character by enticement to sin, to solicit, to sin, to tempt. Blessed is he that endureth. That's pretty self-explanatory. Like, man. But let's see what else we can get out of James. Because there's some more good stuff in this uh, chapter. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And that's what this fool is doing right here. Oh, I'm going to set y'all free tonight so you can go off into the world and commit all types of abominations. But as I said, yes, the scripture says we are not saved by the law, right? We're going to get that. Let's jump down here. Verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Because of what? Let's get a preset. This is how you are saved. By hearing the engrafted word, but... It's not just hearing, you have to be a doer and you have to endure until the end, right? Let's get Psalms 119, and I think it's verse 3 or 4. Hold on, let me find it. Verse, uh, verse 9, Psalms 119 and 9. Beth, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So what does it mean to cleanse your way? Meaning all the wickedness you have done, transgression of the law, which we read in 1 John 3 and 4 at the start of this video. Where shall a young man cleanse his way? It says here, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now, when we get, what is it? 1 John 3. So I can get that. No, it's John 15, I think it is. Yep, this is John 
15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So when you hear the word, the word cleanses you by making you to repent. That's why when you get the book, uh, what is it? Acts 13 and 26. Or is it uh, Salaki? Is it X? The ninth chapter. Because Salaki, let me just find it real quick. Because what we got to understand, you're cleansed through hearing the word, right? But what did, uh, I think it was Paul who said, Salakia, let me find it. All right, Salakia, it's in Romans, not Acts. Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world. Because what did Yahweh Shah say in um, John, okay? If you were of the world, the world would love you. But because ye are not of the world, it hateth you. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Now, how do you renew your? How do you uh, transform and renew in your mind? We just read it in Psalms one nineteen and nine. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to this word. And then John 15 and 3 said what? Now you, ye are cleansed by the word. So we, so we know, right? So now let's go back to James, right? So it says, James 1 and 21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and uh, superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So this guy right here, you heard it from his mouth, say, I don't keep none of them. The Ten Commandments. He said, I don't, I don't, I don't follow the Ten Commandments. I don't keep them. That's what he said at the start of the video. Right? But what did the scripture just say? What did James just say? But be ye doers of the word. So whatever the word says and not hearers only deceiving your own self. So don't you can't just sit up there and hear the word and not be a doer of the word to try to be willing. Verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholded himself and goeth his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was, man. That's cold blooded. But hold on. Christianity, they love this verse next. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue with therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. See that part right there, they skip out. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, what's funny is, let's look up that word doer in the Greek. Show y'all something. Strong's G, 4163, Poietes. Poietes. Right, Poietes. And it says here, a maker, a producer, author, a doer, performer, one who obeys or fulfills the law. Huh. <laughs> I mean, do y'all, are y'all not seeing what I've been showing you in the scriptures that I've been bringing out? One who obeys or fulfills the law. A doer. So when you hear the word, don't just hear, be a doer, obey and fulfill the law. 
You can't make this. Hey, what my what my uh what my dude Kevin um saying you will say? S -s Excuse my French, but you can't make this shit up, man. You can't. You can't make it up. It's right here. It's right here. It's in the scriptures, right? And what's the work? Let's look up the work. Be a doer. Obey the law. Right? Let's look it up, man. Strong's G, 2041. Ergon. Ergon. All right. Now, it says here, business, employment, that which anyone is occupied, that which one undertakes to do, enterprise, undertaking, any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind, an act, deed, thing done. The idea of working is emphasized in opposition to that which is less than work. So some sort of act or deed. Deed of what? Act of what? Of obeying or doing the law. Now, since we've got that out the way, let's go back. Let's finish. We're a little bit over an hour now, but this is just the spirit. It's on me to keep going a little bit, so we're kicking it into overtime. So hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of this lesson. Um, this is James 126. If any man among you seem to be religious and brittle, brittleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before the most uh, before God, Elohim, the judges, the angels, and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Let's look at that word unspotted. Y'all got to learn how to look words up, man, to get the, the uh, full meaning so that you can break the scripture down to understand what it's really saying. All right. Spotless metaphor, free from censure, irreproachable, free from vice, on uh unsullied right let's go to the root word so this is a two-part word alpha first letter of greek alphabet yep alpha all right and then the other one is strong's g 4695 spilao spilao all right to defile Spot. So unspot, uh, unspotted means you're defiled. You're unclean. How are you unclean? Right? By transgressing the law. To defile, to spot. So the only way you can be unspotted is not to be defiled. But if you're defiled, you're spotted. Simple. All right, so we're done with that one. Got a few more here, and then we'll close it. All right, so uh, let's, uh, yep, we already got that. Let's go to James, the second chapter. And um, we'll start at uh, verse 8. This is James 2 and 8, and it says, If ye fulfill... The royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. And see, this is the scripture that the church, Salaki, excuse me, the church house will bring out, but they won't go into depth like I just showed you precepts that we have to keep the law. Right? Now it says here, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Now, why was it say that? Because you can't sit up there and say you love your neighbor, right? Which is your fellow Israelite. And you have a brother that comes in fully dressed. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, let's just say he has on good apparel. All right. He's all decked out. I see what that's just him. He just like to wear, you know. But then you have another person who is down on their luck, a little bit poor, don't have much to offer or whatever. But the first dude who came in, you treat him like, you know, like he's a top tier dude, right? But then the, the next guy who come before him, you kind of a little bit standoffish or whatever because you're judging the out appearance. That's having respect of persons. That's what it's talking about. 
And I'm guilty of doing that shit. I'm very guilty of doing that. You know, it's easy to to uh, to be in the flesh and go off because you see someone, you can, ah, I ain't gonna really, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna really deal deal with you like that. But then you have your favorites. You'll you'll have a brother that come around and be like, oh yeah, all right, man, yeah, you can have it. Uh. But then you see the same dude, like, yeah, nah, I ain't got nothing for you. That nah, you should, we shouldn't be doing that. I should be treating that the the first brother who I treated, the second brother should should get the same treatment. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Because keep in mind, man, this lesson is just not for the elect, but this lesson is also for me, too. Everything that I'm reading out tonight and that I'm, uh, you know, breaking bread with you guys, this applies to me as well. I'm no I'm I'm not perfect. I'm working on myself every day to do the best I can. Uh, following after you how about Shimmy was shot. Is it easy? No. But I'd rather have it no other way because your was shot, if he can do it, you have to be willing to try, man. The scripture says make your election, uh make your call to election sure. Meaning that when you get this truth, you want to go all out and do everything you single can to make sure that in the end, if you endure that you may have hope that you'll be saved. Verse 10, James 2 and 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of them all. Now, this is the scripture that he brought out uh, when he was preaching to his uh, congregation, right? For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit uh, no adultery, yet if thou kill, that I'll become a transgressor of the law. So he's saying, basically, you're being a hypocrite. Because if you're going and you teaching saying you should be doing this, this, and that, but then you turn around and do it, right? You're a transgressor of the law. So now when they look at that scripture, they automatically have it embedded in their head that, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and just do what I want to do anyway because I can't keep it perfect. So they think they're taking that scripture out of context and say, hey, for whosoever break one law, you broke them all. You'll get to them all. So then you'll have people that just sit there and say, well, shh, I can't keep them all. So I'll just, you know, I'll believe I'll have the faith and I shouldn't have to do anything. No, that's not what it's talking about, man. Because we just read in chapter one, be, don't be a hearer of the word, but a doer, obey and fulfill the law. We just read that. Verse, uh, verse 12, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. And this could be a stumbling block. This could be a stumbling block. Now, let's get the scripture. Let's get a precept so you guys understand real quick if I could find it. Here it is, Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, right? Because James just said, all right, fulfill the royal law, okay, which is liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now, what does this scripture mean? That means even though you know you're under grace, that does not give you free access to go and just do whatever the hell you want to do in the flesh, that's what this scripture is talking about. You don't sit there and go just because you have a grace period to get your shit together. Excuse my French. Right. You so-called ignorant Christians think that you can sit here during this grace period. To go and commit more abominable acts sleeping with your uh, your best friend's wives and vice versa, eating all type of uh, foods that you're not supposed to eat, everything that's under the law. Now, let's get Romans 6 chapter. Let's see what Paul say. Okay, because we just read in James about liberty, grace, right? This is Romans 6 and 1. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right? Look, at here. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we ain't supposed to continue in sin. Romans 6 and 20, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? So he's saying the things that you used to do, what sort of fruits were you getting from it? Now you are ashamed of it because you've woken up to the truth. For the end of those things is death. So now you are ashamed because you know if you continue walking in the ways that you were walking in in the flesh, watch this. Let's drop down. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord. So you continue walking in the lust of your flesh. And it's telling you the wages of that, which is sin, because anything that you do contrary to the law is sin. So the wages of that is death. You're going to be put to death. You can't get around it. Can't get around it. Um, let's see. There is there was another scripture. I wanted to grab. Here we go, Romans 3 and 31. <laughs> you can't make this up, boy. Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Christians? God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. So the law is still established. So, we got two more scriptures. Let's close it out. Galatians 5, right? Five and 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Now you'll have some Christians come and say, you know, I'm walking in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, foolish, just a bunch of foolishness, right? But this is what really walking in the spirit, contrary to the flesh is what it's talking about. We're going to get into it says this, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the of Salakia, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Meaning, when you want your spirit, like the scripture says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because the spirit and the flesh is always uh, constantly battling each other. Your spirit wants to do the right thing, but your flesh tells you, and eh, now nah, we're going to do this because I get enjoyment out of this. I'm in my comfort zone. That's what that scripture is saying there. But check this out. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now it's going to tell you. Now. Pay attention because everything is going to tell you the works of the flesh goes back pertaining to the law of what not to do, which goes back to the Ten Commandments, which is a short version form of all 613 laws. OK, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery in the law, fornication in the law, uncleanness and lasciviousness in the law, idolatry. And the law, witchcraft, and the law, hatred, and the law, variance, emu uh, emula emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, meaning parties of, you know, uh, going to parades, riots, and everything, getting drunk, all of that stuff, 
and such like of which I tell you before. All of this is in the law of what not to do. As I have also told you in time past that they which do such things. What things? Everything he just outlined here. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high. Now, here's what you can do. But the fruit of the spirit is, what's the fruit of the spirit? Now, when it says the fruit of the spirit, meaning the works of the spirit, love, love thy neighbor as thyself, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, meaning patience against such. There is no law. So if you practice the fruit of the spirit. You don't transgress anything and you have a better chance of making it if you endure to the end. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. So as you can see, this is just the definition of. Um, how can I say so you guys are not confused, confused, everything that's outlined here from verse 18 to verse 22 is just a short form of what not to do in the latter days. If you are staying away from adultery, men, I'm talking to the brothers, stop sleeping with other men's women. If you find a if you find a chick, just all you have to do is make sure you the only dude she dealing with. It's not that hard. But if you know she uh, with someone, I don't care if she hate the dude. You don't sit up there and you sleep with her when if she's dealing with somebody else. That's adultery. Now, some of y'all on learn may say, oh, it's when you're married and everything. True. But the scripture says when a man comes with a woman and they become one flesh, what consecrates a marriage? Sex. So think about when you lost your first virginity. Think about that. That first person whose virginity you lost, you lost your virginity to, Salakia, technically they're your husband or wife. So... You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> we that's why I said in an earlier video, we all fall short of the glory, man. We are all sin. And the scripture says, he that says that he doesn't sin is a damn fool. R roughly paraphrasing. Roughly paraphrasing. All right. So, but let's get the last scripture, man, and we'll close out. All right. This is book of Revelations 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city see what i mean blessed are they that do his commandments and this is in the last book of the scriptures the book of revelation so if the commandments if the law such commandments were done away I just went through a whole bunch of precepts showing you that it was never done away. So, you know, Lord willing, you guys were edified, man. Um, hopefully the point was made. If you have any questions, any comments or anything, just drop a comment down below this video. Um, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Or if I don't answer on the comment board, I'll answer by doing a, a video upload. So, um, once again, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. All right. Peace and Shalom.